Survival House Network. going on everybody welcome to another cinema and emma zach and i are here with mac from mac and zach save the world and we're here to flush the shit out of your personal taste stop saying that it's, it's bad no it's gonna it's gonna happen it's not good it's terrible it's gonna it's gonna happen they don't make no sense <laughs> it's gonna happen anyway so the film of the hour this time around is the pet cemetery remake of course we'll get into that in the second half of the show uh, but this episode is obviously coming out a little quicker than what we've anticipated. I mean, we wanted to start off doing these monthly just because we don't want to overload ourselves and we want to make sure there's enough appreciation for them for us to keep doing them a little bit more. But uh, this is a special circumstance. And since we all saw the movie, Mac included, we figured why not do it? So, But anyway, we'll get into that in a few minutes, but we're going to talk about some News blurbs and whatever else is on our mind. You gotta say something back. You just gonna be fucking quiet. I'm gonna be quiet. Fuck boy. He was talking. I'm not gonna interrupt him. Yeah, he didn't give you a chance to chime in. Yeah, he like, didn't. oh, Max here. You just gotta take my word for yeah. it. <laughs> no, actually, I think Mac did it right because usually Zach, what you're talking about is when I go, Zach's here, and you go, what's up? I'm like, I wasn't even. I didn't finish saying your name yet. Fuck. <laughs> but, no, it's all good. Uh, what you been doing, Mac? Oh, you know, hanging out, watching some shit and stuff. Playing Nintendo. Playing Nintendo. Cock. What have you been watching lately? That's one thing we talk about on these. Um. Well, I watched us, the new Pet Cemetery, obviously, <laughs> and then um, I've been watching that Black Mirror. It's pretty fucked up. Black Mirror is cool. I still never watched any episodes past the debut with the the pig fucking. It kind of reminds me of something like Twilight ish, but like in Britain. Yeah, Twilight. You know what the vampires? That's donk. Yeah, Twilight Zone. Sorry. But does it get a, does it get I liked the pig fucking episode, the very first one, but I hear it gets more I haven't seen all of them, so you ruined that for me. That's the very first episode, isn't it? The fucking episode 1. I just I've been watching bits and pieces. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't ruin anything for you. I but it, You did. <laughs> I wanted to be surprised by the pig fucking. So he started like episode 8 and then watched like the beginning and then stopped. He he started episode 20, watched the beginning and stopped. No, actually, someone was watching it, and then I started watching it then. And then someone else was like, hey, I know a good one, White Christmas. I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Did they fucking jizz in your face after they said that? They did. And I was like, ah, what the <laughs> fuck? Well, that's what I should do. I should look up recommendations for good episodes, because I watched that debut episode, and I liked it, but for some reason, it, it didn't make me want to keep watching. It didn't feel like an anthology horror show like I thought it was supposed to be, or sci-fi or whatever. Uh, um, I can't remember the one, but there's one where they like film this chick. She wakes up and doesn't know what the fuck's going on, and she walks out, and they're all filming her. It's pretty cool. I can't remember the name. It's weird. But White Christmas is pretty awesome. Okay, maybe I'll check that one out after I'm done watching what I'm watching, which, uh, Zach, I finally... I'm almost through it. I, I finally started watching The Haunting of Hill House, or whatever it's called. I still haven't watched that. Oh. Well, I'm on I'm on the second half of episode nine, so I've got one more after this, and then I'm done. But I like it. I don't remember what you guys said. I think Josh James, what was the complaint? I think there was a common complaint you guys had about it, that you liked it all right, but it was it something about the characters? He said that they were all assholes or something. Yeah, something like they were all unlikable and they were all assholes. And I, I mean, they're all fucked up, but I guess it's kind of within reason. I mean, that's kind of the, the point. You know, I guess, but I don't have a problem with that. I think it's pretty good. Mac, you should watch it. Yeah, I've played on it. I actually forgot all about it. <laughs> yeah, you, Mac, you've been watching fucking the, the Trailer Park Boys cartoon? I have not. Is that out? Yes. I didn't know it was even out. Did you watch the last season of the Trailer Park Boys? I don't even know. Well, it ends with them, like, uh, they get caught by the law again. Every season ends with them going back to jail. Yeah. And uh, while they were getting fucking arrested, they took a bunch of uh, fucking mushrooms. <laughs> and then, uh, all of a, like, at the end, uh, fucking, they, they just enter a, a cartoon world. And then, I guess the next season is just all cartoon. That's fucking awesome. And uh, Mr. Leahy, that guy, he died. Uh, yeah. After the last season. And uh, he's he's already showed up in the cartoon as a ghost. Hell yeah. Poor dog. That's pretty cool. I started watching that. 
Sounds awesome. I know you also watched, I mean, unless you were just shit talking to shit talk, but did you finally go back and watch the changeling? I did. It's and, whatever. It's five out of ten. Really? I, I, I thought it uh, held up nicely. It's one of those ones that... Oh, ghost stories have to be, like, really fucking good for me to think anything of them. I've, that's always been my genre. I mean, if it's done right. I mean, I know it's been exploited to hell in the last ten years. I don't really like the mainstream... All the possession movies, right? There's a kind of stupid, but... You know, movies like A Haunting and, and The Changeling and, of course, The Exorcist and shit like that I, I like a lot. Did you ever see The Changeling, Mac? No. Okay. It's uh, I liked it a lot. I thought it did slow burn really well, and I don't think it's an overly complicated story. I like how it's fairly simple. The twist is good, effective, and uh, it wraps up nicely. Nobody fucking dies in it, which is kind of weird. I don't think anybody dies in it besides the people that are already dead, um, but I liked it. Um... Let's see. I watched it with Joe Bob Briggs. That's donk. Well, yeah, I know. It's Wait, a, what's it about? It's it's a haunted house story. It's about this guy that acquires this giant old mansion, and uh, it's got activity. And the guy himself, played by George C. Scott, the guy who played Patton back in the day, he he himself is a widow. His wife and child died in an accident, so he moves into this house where something similar kind of happened to the to the spirit that's haunting this house he he realizes through his research so he kind of feels this draw to learn more about it because he has some kind of you know kinship with it he can relate to it and it's just all about him kind of uncovering what happened and and why the the ghost is there that's like every ghost story Kind of. I mean, <laughs> well, no, it's got the it's got the same old exposition scene where he's like at the public library <laughs> looking at the shit. Right. But there's this dang scene where he uh, fucking digs up his wife and kid and jacks off on both of them. That doesn't happen at all. <laughs> that would have been better. That would have been a plot twist. See, I, I, I'm completely the Zach character in this episode. People are going to be like, what the fuck is going on? This guy, why is he acting so different? See, I play a character on back of Zach. So on this episode, I play that character, I guess. No, you don't have to. You could just be like you are in Cinema with Mac here. Like you can, you can just do that. I can't do that. You have to come in. See, I had this great vision for this podcast where, oh yeah, every episode, uh, whoever picked the movie is gonna introduce it. And then, uh, so last time I'm like, okay, I'm doing this episode, right? I'm, I'm introing it. And he's like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. And I'm like, this fuck boy, he's gonna <laughs> fucking just make everything boring as fuck. Like I can't be like, I, there's no. See, fucking- I'm, I'm confused because he has you in like every podcast, but you can't start it. Yeah, he's a fuckboy. Exactly. <laughs> What's the point? I have started every podcast since the dawn of time. It's I, I'm just confused on why you guys have like 20 podcasts. Like everyone's like, oh, it's the same thing. Oh, so Mac doesn't even realize the point of us having multiple podcasts. That's what he said. Yeah, I know. It, it's it's fucked so, and overrated, so, and I think I'm going to be sick, and it's all your fault. <laughs> you are the end of everything. No, what it is is we do the commentaries. You know what those are because you do them on Mac and Zach as well. Yes. So... Those are really just off the seat of our pants. We just kind of watch the movie. Sometimes we don't talk about the movie, as you know, as you've been on. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, I think the ones that you've been on, we do talk about the movie. But whatever. And we just bullshit. But we don't really get to talk about uh, news bits or whatever. And this is just a classic podcast because we used to do that way back in the day where we talked about what was you know going on in the spectrum. And Oh, so this is just a ripoff of Scumbags? You mean well, scum? Uh, if, if if that's what scumbags <laughs> is, then scumbags is a rip off the original BTM. Nah, I mean not really because we didn't know you then. So now that you completely uh, fucking uh, derailed the conversation, what else you been watching? <laughs> porn. Bunch of porn. I watched that movie Doubt that you fucking said uh, uh, you didn't like, Aaron. I liked it. I didn't say I didn't like it, motherfucker. I said it was all right and. Uh, the ending, I felt a little underwhelmed. I have doubts. That was fucking genius. Like, the whole movie, uh, it was fucking set up to be a Warshack test. Like, uh, uh, fucking certain people are going to be on her side and think, like, oh, yeah, she's the right one. And then other people are going to be like, no, there's plenty of reasonable doubt that he didn't do anything. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was done brilliantly. Yeah, I don't like Meryl Streep movies. If it's not Death Becomes Her, I don't care for it, which I love that movie. because you're a cunt. All right. That becomes her as a fucking retard movie. I watched, I watched that. Is it Hauntings? That show on Netflix where people sit there in that room and talk about their fucking... Yeah, horror, fuck that show. Horror story. No. It's pretty fucked up. Dude, Zach really is going on the troll tonight. Why, what's the matter with you, man? I like the way you are on our Cinema Animus. It's just classic podcast. 
But this is Mac and Zach episode, so he's got to be. No, nah, yeah, got Mac and Zach are here. He's got to play the part, or else it doesn't. It makes sense. I think you should dial it back. But we're gonna talk about. I think you should blow me. Something else that we haven't watched. I will. What's so funny is he's acting more grotesque than we did on Happiness, which actually would have called for acting fucking grotesque. But that movie itself was enough. What's that about? Uh, we don't have to listen to the episode. You should watch it, though. It's yeah, listen to the fucking episode. Why are you showing up asking us why we have different episodes? I don't even listen to our <laughs> podcast, man. I, I'm too busy to even do anything anymore. Well, Happiness is fucked up. And if you're anything like Zach, you'll probably love it. It involves a lot of like children jerking off, child molestation. Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, that <laughs> I, you could totally understand. Like when you see that movie, you know, because we're alternating who's picking the the movie, the topics, and it's obvious who picked that movie. You? No, it, not me at all. But anyway, uh, as far as the news goes, uh, I'm I'm excited about that Alien 40th Anniversary 4K. I did end up pre pre ordering that, Zach. And uh, I guess there's fan films that have been made, and there's a short fan film called Alien Night Shift, and I guess they posted it online. I'm interested to in watching them. I mean, if they're putting them on the official release, they must have been done really well. And they can't be any worse than what someone like Ridley Scott puts out these days. So uh, That's Ridley Scott. You gonna fucking uh, talk shit about Ridley? I, I fucks with Ridley. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just speaking of Ridley, Daisy Ridley, do you guys see that new Star Wars uh, trailer? I know Zach could give two fucks. No, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. What was that? The what trailer? They released the Star Wars trilogy, a uh, Star Wars trailer, the new one. Oh, yeah. What, Rise of Skywalker or whatever they called it. Yeah, I don't know. A great title. That's not fucking generic at all. Yeah, it sucks. There's always got to be a rise in there, right? Yeah. You eventually, you get, if you, you, you go through your returns. Are we not supposed to know that Daisy Ridley's totally fucking Skywalker's daughter? Are we not supposed to know that? Uh, yeah, it's it's gonna happen. I, I mean, I did. I don't really care about those movies, but I did see the last couple. Uh, and it, when you watch the first one, J.J. Abrams did. You kind of see that's the twist they're going for. But then they gave the second one to Ryan, jo- Ryan Johnson. Yeah, the second one was weird. I didn't really care for it. And then he kind of fucked it up, and he kind of deviated from every like setup you think the first movie was doing. See, maybe that'll be good then. No, but listen. So I, I think. And this one, since they got J.J. Abrams, Abrams back, I literally think they're just going to kind of wipe away that last one. And he's going to kind of continue with the, yeah, like you said, the the setup for her being a Skywalker and probably Luke's daughter or something. I don't know. I could care less. I mean, those movies are just popcorn flicks to me. They're no different than a Marvel movie I, or whatever. Just watch shit explode, eat some popcorn, leave. Uh, but anyway, Rob Zombie, he's expecting a fall release for his shit storm three from hell. His trump card, his last shot at a career. Oh my god! And he's ca- he's cast Barry Bostwick, who I actually really really like, and Chaz Bono. Uh, whatever. Mm. Yeah, I don't like it. You know what his best movie was? Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. You think it was that shitty witch movie? Yeah, fuck it. Uh, that that's the dankest movie he's ever made. I hate that movie. It's because you're a cunt. Lords of Salem, Mac. What'd you think about that movie? I hate it. <laughs> I never watched it. It's trash. Don't bother. Because he's a cunt, too. Uh, give us a news bit, Zach. What do you want to talk about? Oh, uh, fuck it. The only thing I got is Disney+. Plus. Well, that's interesting, though. Uh, so, they're going to fucking slay Netflix. They're going to come out of the gate swinging with The Simpsons. They got all, every season of The Simpsons. They've obviously got all the Fox properties. And obviously, they've got all their properties and all their subsidiary properties under Disney. And then they've announced that like, they're they're... They're not just going to nickel and dime you with titles. They're coming out with everything and uh, uh, definitely all their classics and shit like that. Their anime classics. And I guess if anybody has the bandwidth, like the money to afford the bandwidth, it's Disney. And they're also coming out swinging with a six ninety nine price tag, which will inevitably go way up. But this is obviously to attract the new subscribers. But everybody's going to jump on that. You give me a platform where I could watch Heavyweights, Mighty Ducks 2, and Die Hard, and Aliens, and... See, I doubt they have everything. I doubt they have all that shit. I, I bet you that quote was loose, too. I bet you they won't put... Well, they they own all of it, but I don't think they're going to put everything on there. But I think it'll be pretty hefty. I really do. They're going to they gonna take more racist shit out of all their movies like they did with Fantasia and all this stuff? I don't think they're going to have Songs of the South on there. Yeah. You know? But honestly, I think it's huge. The fact that I was unsure about the TV side of it, if they acquired the TV Fox rights, but 
them having that official trailer with Homer and the Simpsons with the Mickey hats and stuff like that. Uh, and they announced that they're getting every season of the Simpsons. That's a big deal. That means they're going to get other Fox properties. They might even have Married with children on there. They might have all these other shows, um, you know, Futurama and stuff like that. To me, that's a big deal. And that means Netflix is not going to have any of that shit anymore. I mean, Netflix is going to be reduced to their in-house TV shows, which I mean, they've, they've realized this. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what they've been boning up for and preparing for the last few years. Hopefully they're like, oh, fucking clamoring, and they're like, oh, we're going to have to fucking lower the price. We just uh, raised it a third time. Oh, it's going up to a, a ridiculous amount. And like I said, Disney, I was shocked by six ninety nine. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be totally insulting at first because they want to attract those new subs. But, I mean, six ninety nine is dirt cheap, and it's, six it's ad-free. It's fucking Netflix. It's, it's now over 10 bucks a month, and they just fucking uh, paid zero uh, taxes. Uh, like, oh, fucking greedy. Fuckers, ten bucks a month. Where where are you living? It's going up again, and and I think I don't think it's gone up again. But they've announced that it's going to go up again after it just going up last year, and it's going to be like upward. It's going to be close to fifteen bucks. Yeah, I saw that. They're fucking yeah. They're going to lose fucking so, so many people right away. Right whenever Disney comes out, and then they're going to be like, "What the fuck are we going to do?" Uh, I I guarantee they're going to be the ones dragging their feet. Like, yeah, yeah, we don't have to lower the price. We'll just keep putting out all this great original content. They love our content. They'll be back. I think there's enough. I think they have enough original content that'll keep some diehards in there. But yeah, not for that price point. They're going to have to lower it. I'll be fucking gone with the wind. Me too. I mean, I saw that meme where people are like, yeah, I see that they're raising the price, but it's going to suck for the, the account holder or some shit like that. Yeah, no, it's like I said, the, with how much Disney owns, I, everybody's going to have it. They better put out their old shit. Well, they did say they did say 100%. That every single Disney Vault classic will be on there. That's that's oh, hell Wee, yeah. Who gives a fuck? Disney Vault classics suck. You're you're dumb. But, Aladdin. I watched that for the first time recently. Shitty movie. So I'm talking about Disney movies, like on the Disney Channel. Well, that's another thing. I doubt that'll be all there. No, hold on. It should hold be. on. Hold on. They 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 assured. Like I said, the quote might have been a little loose. I don't know all the ins and outs to it, but that was one thing that was speculated. Like, all right, so you guys have all this shit, and you guys are having your own streaming service. Obviously, the difference between Disney versus Netflix is you guys don't have have to license anything out. Netflix they cycle out their content because they pay you know licensing fees and they expire and they go in and out with stuff. Disney owns all this shit. They don't have to worry about licensing at that point. It's just bandwidth. So. It was burning on everybody's tongues. Okay, are you guys going to do the Netflix thing? And they said, look, we have access to everything, and you guys are going to get everything. See, if only this would have happened like three years ago before they bought Star Wars and New Line Cinema or uh, Fox, they wouldn't own anything. Like, nobody would really care. Like, oh, well, Disney's got to be the kid shit that you buy. If the you fact see. of the matter is, is they do, though. I look, they, they got Fox, they got, they, they got not only Disney, but they got Touchstone, they got all the fucking bullshit under Disney. They got Marvel, they got Star Wars, they own everything. The Simpsons, they own, I mean, the Monopoly kind of scares me, damn near Monopoly, and part of me doesn't want to feed the monster, but my lord, six ninety nine, it's going to have all this shitty, this awesome content, I'm probably going to fall victim to it, Why? and everybody else will too, uh, but... I don't know. Homer ne- Bounds, their, their greatest movie. I don't think I don't think Netflix allows you to do an annual. I think they only do monthly. They allow you to do annual. Well, they allow that's you to do it. annual. It. But no, anyway, the the Disney service. I don't think the others allow it, but maybe I'm wrong. But the Disney service said they're going to allow annual too. You can do six ninety six ninety nine a month, or you can do like what sixty nine dollars for the whole year. Just just I'm probably just gonna for that price. I'd probably just get the year. And so I could be locked in for as much as possible. I mean, because that price is going to shoot way up. Plus it's 69. Why would you not buy something for 69 bucks? I don't know, but I'm hoping there's a lot of man of the house on there. Some, uh, not, you know, the, the not so golden age of Disney, but it's the golden age for us. We need them original TV movies. Uh, Brink baby. Brink. I think they will. I think they are going to have all their, I think they're going to have their Disney channel classic shit. See, I think they would want people to forget that shit even exists. Why? The thing is, is the 90s was like a dark age for Disney. You know, now when Disney puts out a live action movie, it does a billion dollars. But in the 90s, it was man of the house. It was fucking first kid. (laughs) You know, these movies were just kind of so-so. I don't think they'd waste time doing that stuff these days. But I love those 90s movies. And I think we're going to get a lot of that. And they already said they're coming out swinging with as soon as it airs, it's they're going to have original shows launching and they're going to have original movies launching like i mean not that i'm too worked up about it but did you see mac that they're uh coming out of the gates with a uh 
a Marvel spinoff show with the Falcon and in the Winter Soldier. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit either. But I'm saying <laughs> I didn't even know that. I don't care. That's some fucking incel shit right there. I don't care either. But I'm saying these these are smart moves. It's going to be a big deal for them. So whatever you got- smart moves for a world that's fucking full of retards. That's what it is. You guys are all going to get it. You fucking both are going to get it. Don't even fucking lie. I just said I was. So you're going to love it and you're going to get it and your fucking nieces and nephews are going to watch it. Everybody's going to have it. I wonder what they're going to do, though, as far as uh, sharing wise. You know what they should do to stomp Netflix? Be like, hey, you remember that thing Netflix used to let you do where they'd let you use it on multiple devices and multiple accounts? We're going to bring that back, you know, because Netflix just crippled that. And I think Hulu doesn't even do that anymore at all. Netflix is a fucking prison state. Uh, Who wants to be at Netflix? Come over to the cool kids table, bitch. Yeah. Anyway. So that was a pretty big one. Uh, the only other things I was going to bring up, which we don't even have to spend any time on it because that Disney thing took a hot minute, was I see here that the Ghost Hunters guys are getting a new show on the, on the, tra- on the travel channel, Ghost Nation. Why? <laughs> Why'd they do that, though? The Ghost Hunters guys? Which one's that? Uh, The guy that used to be fat, but he's not really fat anymore. From the Zach, from the, Z- what's his name? The Zach guy that did all those shows with those two dudes. No, it's or the, or, or the sci-fi ghost hunters. No, no, it's Jason Hawes, Dave Tango and Steve Gonsalves, Gonsalves. I don't know. Dave Tango. He was on the fucking sci-fi one. Okay. Anyway, they're getting a new show. It has, hasn't that fad kind of dissipated the ghost thing? People believe in the ghostesses. They got to see them. I do too, but I would have thought this marketing and the hype behind all this would have been faded what about jack osborne wasn't he getting a paranormal show or did that already start yeah every fucking know about 10 years too late on that i i stopped watching that stuff i mean all the shows that i used to like just weren't good anymore and they're not good anymore but anyway i got i got one more movie i watched that i liked what's that I watched Film Worker on Netflix. Uh, speak of the devil. It's this movie about motherfucker. He was, uh, he played, uh, uh, fucking Barry Lyndon's oldest son on, uh, Stanley Kubrick's movie, Barry Lyndon. And basically, he was a big fan of Stanley Kubrick and just basically gave his life to him pretty much. Was like, uh, Stanley, I'm a big fan. Can you be my mentor? I want to learn the tricks of the trade. I want to, I want to work with you. And, and after that, he like worked on behind the scenes on every movie. Like, he was involved in the casting of Danny Torrance and all the, the cast of The Shining. And basically, he's now the guy they go to because uh, Kubrick's dead. He's the guy they go to because he knows how Kubrick wanted all of his movies to look whenever they're doing a new transfer for it and all this stuff. It's pretty good. It's dog. That's cool. And the thing is, I know I've watched a bunch of shit. I, just, I can just never remember when we... I need to start making a list like you do or keeping track of the stuff I watch, but... Um, yeah, I'm on another level of you. I mean, I'll give you that, man. I mean, it's on a level of other weird shit. You've got to ascend to me. All right. <laughs> you got to find that enlightenment to ascend to my uh, state of being. Anyway, on that note, we'll be right back and we're going to get into Pet Cemetery. In the woods today, LA discovered a charming little landmark the Pet Cemetery place to bury our pets and remember them. It might seem scary, but it's not. Perfectly natural. Just like dying is natural. The whole town's been using this place for generations. Folks make a kind of ritual out of it. It's not some campfire story. There's something up there. Something that dates way back. Those woods belong to something else. Something. That cat was dead. That brings things back. Church? I know what you're thinking of doing. But they don't come back the same. Daddy. (laughs) Who's? What's going on? Fuck your daughter. <laughs> I should never have shown you that place. Your child is not the only thing that will come back. The barrier is broken. <laughs> we have a second chance. 
Sometimes dead is better. All right, everybody, going to talk about Pet Cemetery. This movie, this damn movie. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. It, it feels like. What'd you guys think of the pacing of it? Ah, uh, but uh, I let's just it was copy paste. Uh, it it was uh, basically like eighty percent the original movie. Yeah, it um, was. And th- I got some notes that I wrote down right after watching it. Uh, you want to just go through them, or yeah, go for it. Well, do you want to talk about each section first? Well, these go in order. I, I okay, did okay. I did it that way. Okay, so the opening was a bit generic. They pulled a "Don't Breathe" and showed a fucking uh, a seed from later in the movie for no reason, and then we were just spending the whole movie waiting for that to happen. Uh, why would you not start out the movie with shots of the pet cemetery itself? The title screen should have been that fucking sign of the pet cemetery. Why did they not do that? I don't know. You know what's funny is? They changed the, the spelling, too. Because. No, they didn't. They misspelled it. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, they changed the spelling of the movie. It's all spelled different. It was it was misspelled in the original, too. S-E-M-A. Yeah, I know, but okay. they, they did it again. Well, that's supposed to be. Well, they didn't change it then, fuck face. They changed it. They misspelled it again. It's supposed a different way. In the book, it's misspelled. No, it's not. It, did they I, s- oh, my God. Look. Cemetery is, they have it S-E-M-E-T-E-R-Y. So they didn't change anything. So they did, because now it's S-E-M-A-T-A-R-Y. It was always A. It was always S-E-M-A-T-A. No way. This is fucking Mandela effect bullshit. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now on my shelf, Mac. No, it's, you're not. Yes, I am. It's always been S E M A. Anyway, regardless, let's let's not get off on it. <laughs> no, I. You know what's funny is the fact that you had to take notes just shows that how forgettable that is. Because I don't remember any of this shit because the movie was so there for me. Like I don't remember that much about it. The only thing I remember about it is the the third act in which they changed the, all the copy paste bullshit, which was the first eighty percent of the movie, like you said. I, it's just kind of a blur because it was just an expedited, get it out quick rehash of the the original movie. I see. I think there's some things they did maybe a, a tiny bit better than the original. A couple things, but uh, my my end rating at, at the end of this movie is just going to be basically. I'm just rating the last fucking couple minutes where it's different. Yeah, right. That's what I feel like. Well, well one thing that I have a bone to pick about is like in the trailer, which I am glad they kind of did this because usually in trailers they ruin everything for you, and that's pretty much the whole movie. Um, the kids with the masks. I thought that there would be more scenes with that. They had you think that in the trailer, and then you just see like what a minute of them walking by, and that's it. I see. I figured that would just be like, oh yeah, this is a way to make it creepier or whatever. She uh, comes back from the dead and is killing people. She's gonna be wearing one of these bass. I mean, she kind of does for like what two seconds. Yeah, she does. It's like kind of a waste of time to put those kids in there. Whatever. Yeah, fuck them. I don't know. I I'll tell you one thing. I think they one minor thing. I think they did all right. So. The one thing they fixed was how con- in the original Pet Cemetery film, it was always confusing. Why the fuck would Judd tell Creed about the cemetery for the cat? Because it seems like he's so just nonchalant about it. But then obviously it turns to shit. It always has you guessing. It was never super clear. Like, wait a second. Why would Judd do that? Was Judd bad? But clearly he regretted doing it later. This one made it more clear with their little talk they had when they were drinking or whatever that he spelled it out that there's something about the actual place itself that allures you. She wanted to tell people. Yeah. 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 That's the one thing they did. Oh well. yeah. That's the one thing they do. Cause the, in the other one, it was just, he went up there with his dog. Yeah. I just and it, you didn't. And he doesn't know. He's just telling you about, like I said, he's telling you, well, he's telling about the place. Wasn't it more like he went up there himself with his dog before, but in this one, didn't he go up there with his dad or didn't his dad put the well, dog they in changed there? little things like that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I liked the small acknowledgement to his wife, you know, at, at the end there, and where they implied that you know she had died in the past, and he had taken her up there and had to put her down a second time. See, they didn't even bother uh, the original. They uh, took that out and put in the the housekeeper role. Yeah, and then for this one, they didn't even put that in there at all. And I always liked the housekeeper because I thought that was a way to make it darker to have her commit suicide. It was cool, but I it was just pointless to even have her in there. No, because she commits suicide and then it starts that conversation. I always love that. But why does she commit suicide? I'm confused. She's depressed. Don't be a fucking asshole. 
Quit shitting on mental illness. <laughs> Maybe the pet cemetery was talking to her. You know what I don't understand though? Look, so I get it. I, if I'm correct, I read the book in high school. If I'm correct, this is kind of a mix between the two because Judd's wife, I believe, was physically in the book. She wasn't just an afterthought. Yeah, she she was the person that dies, and then that's what starts the kid. Like, so uh, why you know, why not keep her Judd's wife in the original Pet Cemetery then? Ah, uh, because they wanted to fucking uh, someone to commit suicide. I guess they didn't want Judd's <laughs> wife to commit suicide. Well, they 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 could. I just don't. I don't. That I don't understand because she, her character is just so why. I don't know. Jud, Judd's wife's. Well, I guess if if it was Judd's wife, Judd would have to carry a different emotion about him the rest of the movie, and that might change his motives. Maybe that's why. I don't know. They had to take away the attachment. What do I know? And uh, you're you're criticizing fucking Stephen Key because he was the one that he himself wrote that screenplay. It's the only one he ever wrote for any of his movies. And it's arguably his best uh, book to film adaptation that's been done off his work. And this one deviated a lot from the book. And I get it. I I, I don't know I, the ending. I don't know what to think about it. Like I. I We'll get to there. Let's get to my second uh, thing. I got okay. Right. I like that they got to Zelda earlier. Uh, didn't like that they took out the I may I was laughing stuff. Probably trying to make Zelda and Rachel more sympathetic. Yeah, I didn't like that. Didn't they? Uh, didn't they touch on that with like during one of the hallucinations? They did tr- didn't Zelda towards say it? the end? Yeah, yeah. Towards the end, the the kid says it to her. Like whenever she says, like, uh, yeah, my my sister died. She said, oh, you 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 were laughing, and then she admits to it. But yeah, uh, I liked it better. Uh, that's st- the way she tell. Even though the that whole scene is fucking hammy as fuck. Like whenever she's telling that story, it was creepy. What about during the same portion of the movie? The fact that. Fucking Pascal is a total afterthought in this movie. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I, I He's definitely more of a... I never really liked Pascal that much, but he's... De- I always liked Pascal. He's definitely more... Well, I never quite understood Pascal. Like, you tried to help me, so I'm trying to help you. Like, why? He's creepy looking at AF. But, but why? And he's super hammy in the first one. But in this one... He's darker in this one, I feel. But it, is that a black joke? Is that a black joke? <laughs> No, okay. like he's like, sh- like in the first one, he's like having conversations with him. This one, he just like says shit and then leaves. I, yeah, this one, he's like, hey, I'm going to help you out. And then he doesn't tell him anything. He's just yeah, like, he the Yeah, right. <laughs> he just fucking yells at him and disappears. He yells something vague in his face. Like, okay, that doesn't help me. You fuck boy. Yeah, come with me. I want to show you something. Ah, okay, what? <laughs> but my thing is, so the first 80%, as you said, they're just sort of rehashing the first movie. And but the thing is, is they're they're basically rehashing the first movie in less time. And it just seems like they're just not wasting. Like you said, they got to Zelda faster. But dude, they're just they're just fucking trying to hit all the points as quick as possible. Pascal, he's in there. He's done. Yeah, Whenever like there's something good about like a movie that moves fast sometimes. But like for like a horror movie, you need more time with the characters for them to mean anything to you. Some people shit on. The, I mean, I've been watching since this movie came out. I've been watching a lot of stuff on YouTube, like comparison videos and other people's thoughts. And there's been a lot of people I've been reading and watching are shitting on the original actors from the original movie. But uh, yeah, like the da- the daughter's fucking really annoying in the original movie. Pascal! She's fucking annoying. Yeah. I can't stand her squawking. But. Oh, God. All the all the adult actors are fucking hammy, except for except for uh, Steve Gwynn, whatever his name is. He's probably the best. Fred Gwynn. Fred Gwynn. Fred Gwynn. Fred Gwynn. Oh, by the way, on that note, I, I messaged you privately La- on the last one we did. It was when we were doing the commentary for Final Destination. I didn't even fucking catch it. You kept talking about uh, John Denver because that's a recurring theme in the movie. And one of the times you called him motherfucking Bob Denver and I missed it and I could have <laughs> shit on you because that's Gilligan. You called fucking Sean, uh, Sean William Scott, Sean Everett Scott one time. So fuck you. You got the same oh, disease fuck. I got. Fucking American <laughs> Werewolf in London bullshit. Damn it. They both don't have careers anymore. Anyway. Exactly. All right. So that's a wash then. So you, they did add more to the the dead guy, though, because he's like stuck to the little kid and the kid's like freaking out throughout the whole movie. That's in the original, too. Through the whole movie, well, he's still fucking with him, like in the car and shit. Yeah, he does. He shows up at the end of the movie. Yeah. Remember at the end, Pascal's in the semi, you know, talking to the woman, the wife, and she's attached to Ellie Creed and remember she calls the dad on the phone there's a guy named Pascal and this one I guess it's Gage <laughs> I appreciate the dynamic them flipping it because 
I thought they all were both going to get smashed. It made you think that. I, you knew it wasn't going to happen, obviously. We'll get to that. We'll get to that, baby. All right, all right so move it along then. You you control it. Go for it. Okay, my next thing I wrote down was Judd is fucking really thin in this movie. He's laid really thin. Who's not thin in this movie? Because it, exactly. Because it moves so fast, like you said. It, the, the pacing is so quick that everybody feels kind of generic, and everything seems so... I don't... I don't know. It seems like half a second that the creeds move in, that he has this one scene. They they establish that he's a, a surgeon or a doctor in like a millisecond. You kind of yeah, like out of school. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's out of school this time. But the thing is, is they, they don't really do much more than that in the first one either. But they take their time a little bit. That scene is a little bit longer. And, you know, uh, I get it. Gage has the scalpel at the end and she does the same thing in this one. But everything is so fast. You kind of forget this guy's a doctor. He doesn't feel like a doctor. Mm hmm. The meeting Judd was better in the original. Like uh, the the way he comes in, uh, that that was more like the book than this one. Like this is nothing like the book. He meets uh, Ellie first on her own. You know, what I thought was funny where uh, the mom found her talking to Judd or whatever, and and uh, you got you a know, base thing there. Yeah, it's it's got all that <laughs> stuff. But what's funny though is they asked Judd in a later scene. Or like right after that. So how much of this land is ours? It's like, do we own that too? I'm like, oh yes. Then I would have been like, why the fuck were you on our land then? <laughs> why is this all here? <laughs> I was burying a fucking cat. I uh, get off me, bitch. I mean, like <laughs> you were here before this, so fuck you. <laughs> Why'd you rub dirt in my fucking kid's uh, bee sting? That's some archaic shit. Why'd you do that? That's not good for that shit. He's a vaxer, probably. Fuck that old guy. But John Lithgow, I thought he did a good job. I, I mean, with I'm, what he got. I'm just kind of confused on like, like how where the transaction was from or transition was from them, um, bringing him into their home. Like you just, it just cuts and like, yeah, he's it just gets eating a lot. dinner with them. <laughs> that's what, that's that's why them all meeting him at the same time would have been a better way to do it in the movie. Yeah, I, to make it seem like, like they he could have just came, as much. He could have been outside and they could have just met him right there. Now, I like when he was confiding into Creed about the cemetery and the powers of it, or the burial ground, rather, and he talks about how, you know, no, your daughter touched me like I haven't been touched in years, and it, don't laugh <laughs> don't at that. Don't say that to Zach. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm treading on some fucking bad ground. but uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's sour. <laughs> don't. But I appreciate that, but did you really get that connection with them and the, the quick scenes they showed that he was super close to her? I I don't know. I mean, any closer than Gage? Uh, About as much as uh, you could get from a Hollywood movie these days. Isn't it funny? Gage was a total fucking afterthought in this movie. Yeah, Gage only exists for four or five scenes before you, the crash scene happens. You know, there's, he, like, that's a twin. They're, they use two different people, for, two kids for that. It's uh, up. I don't know why, because he's got like fucking three lines in the whole movie. Uh, uh, was that pretty taxing on just one of them? Yeah. Here, switch them out. Let's use the other the other. He kid. exists basically so that twist is extra effective. And so they could do that fucking wink to the audience fake out with the truck. And, and in all fairness, too, he's not that huge in the original but for a couple scenes, but see, I think uh, they did it right in that one because in this one, like if you never saw the original and uh, you're just watching it and you know at some point one of them dies, gets hit by a, a truck, you're going to probably guess that it's the girl because they're spending more time with her. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure at that speed, she probably would have been more bloodier and, uh, you know, not <laughs> like she yeah. was. That's that's what that's how it is with the original, too. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, on the yeah. top on the topic of those damn trucks. They can't fucking hear them clearly coming a mile away like in the original movie, right? There's so many jump scares. Like, yeah, they, yeah, it's always like they, one. They second. don't hear that fucking shit. You don't hear it until it's it's passing the front of your house. In the last, in the first movie, they really built suspense with that scene with Gage, right? Because they're having the picnic. You know, Gage is having fun with Daddy. I'm flying, Daddy. I'm flying. It was a fucking kite. And then you, it keeps <laughs> cutting back and forth to the the semi guy listening to music and taking his eyes off the road, speeding up. And it's just she is that. fuck rocker. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought of uh, Resident Evil Two, yeah, yeah. The semi driver for this one, yeah, yeah. It did, it did kind of remind me. I get it, but no. And then you, and then they hear the truck. They see him running out for it, and there's a big clamor like "Don't let him go out of the road," you know, all that bullshit. And it, it, it's it's a much more effective scene. This one just kind of happens, and and uh, I, I, if they didn't give that away that they switched that, that would have been pretty effective because I went and saw this with my mom. She didn't see it, the trailer either. The trailer. What a crime! And, yeah, Dude, that got what her. a crime that they gave that shit away in the trailer. What idiots! How did the cat survive that hit? Because she was with the cat. <laughs> you know, the cat's already dead. So well, I know, but he probably no. Would've... The mom is died, right? 
No, the cat was at the end of the road. He didn't get hit. She was. The, she. She came up to him. She got him. Oh, she was did, there with him. Did she him. actually pick him up and make it to him? Yeah. No, he was literally right by her. He's. Uh. He. They. They always land on their fucking feet, man. He's got nine lives. I'm. I'm pretty sure he. She said, "Gotcha, bitch," and he. He got out of the way. <laughs> you know. Uh. But. I don't know. Yeah, it would have been effective had I not known about the twist, but I was waiting for it the whole time. That fake out didn't do anything for me because the whole time I'm yeah. like, all right, well, this isn't going to happen. This isn't going to happen. Um, but anyway, moving along. But hey, really quick on that truck, though, that first time they did the fake out when they first introduced and established the busy road, that was dumb, right? Because she's at the literally at the edge of the road with one of the kids and just <laughs> out of nowhere. And, it, and of course, it cues the sound hit boom, and everybody in the crowd supposed to jump. And I'm like, that is the dumbest thing ever. But they also like, uh, yeah, it could have been really d- if they didn't give it away, like the, the fact that he sees her this time and that, like, oh, he didn't hit gauge. What the fuck? They're changing it. And then he doesn't see her or he sees her and then he tries to stop. But then his fucking thing in the back is detached and keeps fucking going down. And that's what hits her. It could have been fucking uh, it could have worked if they didn't give it away. Fuck boys. First of all. I'm just confused. They had all that that fucking yard space, and they do it in the front of the yard with the busy road. Why? Why? I've, <laughs> Why I, they? Do I was that? asking that. With let's play hide and seek over here by the road. Well, no, she she ran over to that part of the house. Yeah, but they were still right next to it. For the they could have had that in the back of their yard instead of on the side, right next to the fucking trees, which was right behind the. I road. I was asking that with the original movie. Why are they having a fucking picnic? Well, they were a mile away from the road, though, with the picnic, and it was all open space. Mm. One thing I noticed in this one, and it, it had to do with the the way uh, the movie starts, where they're showing like all these woods and shit in this road. I was like, okay, is this really the only road that is to town that these fucking trucks can drive on? Well, I was going to ask you before you said that. Have any of you guys ever seen a town like this where big rigs are allowed to travel on those fucking kind of roads? Yeah, that's I've, what I'm getting I mean, at, yeah. I've never seen big know. rigs travel on roads like that. I, and and the original, they weren't quite as fucking... Big riggy? Out in the boonies oh, yeah. as in this movie. It doesn't make any sense. Maybe that's like the road into town. But let's just, for the benefit, assume, okay, for some reason, this is the only fucking road, and they haven't built any more roads, and this is the only place these damn trucks can go. Okay, we'll just bite on that. Hey, man, it's a copy-paste. Did you not want them to put semis in it at all? Listen, listen. Listen, no, assuming that's what's going on with this town, why wouldn't the city at least then pay to put guardrails and shit on on that road? Why don't they upkeep the town? You know what I mean? Yeah, if it's so busy, why don't they, you know? They try to, but all the people get uh, they get pissy. Like, oh, I, you're not going to spend my tax dollars on some guardrails for some stupid kids. Fuck kids. No. All the fucking old people like Judd are like, no, that keeps the fucking little kids dead. I don't want to uh, my neighborhood. Uh, it's stupid. Exactly. It's dumb. Uh, well, yeah, you think they would have clearly they build a pet cemetery for all the fucking people and do- animals that die on that stupid road. I mean, that's all the people, though. That's all like the town people. They don't fucking care about building. How did uh, in the first pet in the first pet cemetery where he's telling the story about the guy that went came back from war? Remember the flashback scene and they burn him into they burn him in the house. And uh, the only scene in that movie that I feel could have just been completely taken out. Well, one of two. So, but how do they say that guy died? Did he die by the trucks too, or totally different? Oh, uh, I think it was, he just died and the dad buried him there. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying like how many, but yeah, that's that scene really fucking seems like uh, that had to have been shot by like the second unit director because it has a completely different fucking tone than the rest of the movie. It's almost hammy looking like, oh, this is the version that fucking Mick Garris would have made for TV yeah. if, had he directed the whole movie. Well, usually the second unit director doesn't do anything with the chief cast. Like he does all the fucking bullshit, the yeah. filler, the transition scenes and shit. Yeah, it, it was. It was just all like throwaway cast members and stuff. Speaking of uh, the damn cat, what do you guys think about church in this one? Not as good as the original. I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't know. He he does the job, but he just looks like a dirty. He looks too cute. He doesn't look like a, <laughs> he doesn't look. There were people in the theater during the scene where he goes and leaves him on the road and then drives away. People were like, oh, <laughs> like he's a fucking dead cat. Why are you all? I go. They didn't give a shit about the girl. They're like, did the cat die again, though? Because, well, <sighs> because he just looks like maybe they were going for ultra realism, but he just looks like a dead feral. He looks like a feral cat. A dirty feral cat. Yeah. He looks alive. 
eh, people still feel for strays. But Church in the first one, his eyes might look hammy. The effects like look might look cheesy to youngins these days. But the eyes don't even bother. I don't see why people. That, that that's naturally what happens with fucking pet eyes. Like their eyes, like uh, they basically reflect light more so that they can see better in the dark. So yeah, whenever you put a camera up to them, you see those eyes really easy. But like you pointed out uh, in a previous conversation that in the first movie, Lewis Creed, he didn't give a fuck. He put that cat out. He gave him the meat and he was ready to kick ass and take names when he was cleaning house in that last act. He just killed him. And this one, he had some remorse like, I can't kill you. And that's what led to the, the, the truck incident. But. Yeah, that's probably there just so that he has another thing to regret. Like, oh, yeah, if I only would have killed the cat. Like, not only did I bring the cat back, but then I, I could have fucking ended it even after that. Because the cat is the reason fucking she goes out on the road and gets hit. So, yeah, he should have just killed the cat. The, let that be a lesson to everybody out there. <laughs> what do you guys think about um, Jason Clark? I think he looks like Frankenstein's fucking monster. He looks like his face was stitched up. He looks like a football. <laughs> he was he was good to cast. He looks like a, a guy that was buried in the past cemetery. He was good in Winchester. Mm, he was shitty in uh, Terminator Genesis. Next. Well, that's a shitty movie. Uh, see, I didn't think anything bad about him in this movie or fucking Terminator. He, just, he he exists. He's whatever. Yeah, I'm just giving him a hard time. I think he does have a funny shaped head, though. But anyway, so going from here, Zach, on your little bullet points. Uh, the, my list, the next like three things I wrote down, we already touched on. So then I get to, uh, we see the Wendigo in this movie. Uh, and that was handled a bit better than it was in the original. Because in the original, we saw that fucking weird face. Wait. Whenever he's taking Gage and putting him in the. We did? In the original? We just see like a human-esque looking face. I assume that's what it, they were getting at, was that was the the Wendigo. Well, when, though? I'm, I'm having trouble picturing. Whatever he's going to bury Gage. And remember uh, during our commentary, we were like, what the fuck? That's the other scene that I think could have been cut out. We were like, I don't even fucking remember that. I don't. Did they just add that to this I, DVD we're watching? I don't watching? even know. What you're I don't about. even remember it, to be honest with you. I don't even know what you're talking about. It's when he was. Well, in this, in this movie, he looks and sees like a shadow of like a, a monster looking guy. Oh, out in the woods. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, he's looking out there for the noise. I didn't see that. I heard him. All I heard was Judd talking about the Wendigo. Yeah. Well, yeah, but later on when he goes out there with his daughter, he looks over and then you see it. See, that's why I think it was handled good, because if if you're not even thinking about it, you might not even notice that's what it was supposed to be. Or maybe I took a piss. I don't know. And I missed it. I don't know. But a piss. A piss. piss. Uh, uh, then I got after the daughter comes back, we get more of a monkey's paw kind of take on the relationship where and I, I wasn't sure if I liked that she they made her self aware like, oh, am I dead? Look, so. There's questions there. I get it. Well, I wrote that it seems that that was her way of manipulating Lewis into thinking she was the same as she was before she died. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree to that. But so who's to say that's not the way they would be necessarily? Because, like, you know, Gage was a kid. Gage was like he was yeah. small. He didn't really have any awareness. Uh, and see, I think I liked it better not knowing if they have any awareness. Well, and just the fact that all. a creepy toddler is creepy is better. But this one, it's a different spin. But the I don't necessarily hate it. I don't really know how I, I'm indifferent to it. I don't it. either. Yeah. I with the it was a I appreciate the different spin. It did make it feel a little bit less like Pet Cemetery and a little bit more generic y. I don't really know what I don't really know what I'm getting at with that, but I, I enjoyed it enough. Um, but maybe that is the way they'd be because in the first movie for the little time that we got to see his wife come back, she seems to be manipulative and, you know, talking to him mm. and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it is what it is, but they did the fake out again too. When she went to Judd's house and, and with the, with the scalpel or whatever, and she cut his Achilles. That happens during the day, which is more like in the movie. Uh, he drugs Judd making the last section of the movie happen during the daytime. The next morning. That, that's how it happened in the movie too. Oh, you mean the book? And the yeah, the book. I wrote that down also. So I I to be honest with you, up until that last act of the movie where they changed things, I was kind of in snoozeville. I thought it was I didn't know what to think. I was kind of bored. Uh and it like it just seemed like a copy paste. Everything was really drab. I, I already told Zach that I don't really like this look this aesthetic on all these modern horror movies where everything's got to be super tinted down and desaturated desaturated there's a lack of there's a lack of contrasting colors everything's got to be so fucking 
I don't know. It, it, it's a bummer. It makes everything look same, same. And I get it. Every era of movies kind of has their own look to it. You know, we watched the faculty or whatever last week, and that looks like every dimension Mac, you know, movie. Mm-hmm. I get it, but I, I don't know. It just bugs me, but I was falling asleep. I was really kind of bored and I'm like, all right, we're just paint by numbers. We're kind of just going through the story that I already know. And maybe had I not seen the original and I was like a younger kid, Maybe yeah. I would have had a diff. Maybe it wouldn't have been as big. Maybe I would have liked it more. That's why it's so hard to to rate this movie because I love uh, Pet Cemetery is probably my favorite Stephen King ad- book and story. So when I rate this one, I gotta uh, yeah. But the next thing I wrote was uh, uh, they diverted our attention during the Judd uh, Achilles tendon scene. Yeah, like they, they made it look like oh he's gonna she's under the bed and then he, he kicks to, the bed. He kicked yeah. the bed. Yeah. And then I didn't like uh, how they uh, made her like shape shift, so like she actually like looks like his wife. What'd you guys think of that? That's weird. Now, was she actually physically shape shifting, or was she just playing with his mind? You know, yeah. Like, see, I wrote that that could have been handled a little better. Like, wait, I don't remember that part when she pretended to be his wife, and she implies of what happened in the past, like of him burying her. That's where you get the the backstory on that for a second. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it could have been handled a little better, like not have it take place the next morning, have it at night so that she's covered in shadow and maybe like, oh, di- maybe it looks like her face is moving, but we're not sure because she's all covered in shadow. Mm. I thought it was funny how like they instantly came back, like it didn't take time, like before they could even get to the house, they were already there. Oh, it was like half a second, like because at the end yeah. when they were burying the whole family, she was when she was dragging her fucking dad into the woods, like a. Well, see, I thought the dad would have. I thought the dad was gonna survive, but then it was like. Now, see how the fuck did she drag her mom up that fucking big she's ass a hill demon, man. and shit? She probably. That's she, what I was telling. Was that you, Aaron? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I, it it might have been Lucas because we went and saw it. It's okay though because she can shape shift. She uh, she shape shifted into Arnold Schwarzenegger for that part. Well, maybe there's another way back there. You know, maybe because she's the she's a demonic. She knows where it is. Maybe there's a secret way behind. She's that. a demonic. She's a demonic. Look, she knows. She's another dimension. Clearly, she has superhuman abilities because yeah. in the original Pet Cemetery, Gage turned into that little fucking fruitcake wearing the dress and the little pimp cane remember <laughs> hell yeah that, see that's where you needed to go you needed to have that kid that's fucking dank the only thing that would have made that better is if he slapped his mom with his pimp hand on that <laughs> with baby powder and that and that in that top hat yeah and he was yeah he's just like a girl and uh but also he's dressed like fucking what's her you name think that I the think... mom was gonna be like all for it look what i'm saying gage too kind of had superhuman abilities because how did that two-year-old body get up in the attic and jump out as a fucking he transformed into a doll for god's sake Rah! and jumped down on her that that was part of uh fucking uh rachel's uh zelda thing too she was seeing him in the outfit that zelda was wearing in that picture yeah on their uh well, let's uh, talk about that. The, they changed the Zelda thing, so she's more sympathetic. She's not like uh, losing her mind, which I always liked in the original. But yeah, how she died in this one? She fell down the fucking. Well, they gave her a little bit more to feel guilty about. That's for sure. Because in the original, she just felt guilty because she laughed and she was so scared. You know, I mean, I think that was kind of the the the, the meat of it. In this one. She was so scared to go up there. She was using the dumb waiter, and she was strictly told not to use the dumb waiter because of how unsafe it was for her. And she did it anyway. And then she fucking fell down it like a fucking glob of shit. It was weird. Yeah, now that's her fault. She shouldn't have fucking stood over it. Yeah, she's a fucking idiot. Fuck her. Like I'm gonna get my meal, but I'm gonna climb into it. And she was starving. Second of all, why would she go back to the house after all that shit? Yeah, fuck her. She, 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 she didn't. What are you talking about? She was hallucinating. What are you talking about? No, okay. No, 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 no. She wasn't. Huh? She went back to her parents' house. Remember? That's her parents' house. Why wouldn't she go back? It's the same house. Oh, that they why would they in. fuck? Because the vent was right there, and that's why she's down there after she calls them, and she's in the the fucking kitchen looking at it. Yeah, there was. There was no scene where fucking uh, Lewis is pissed off after he finds out about that story. And like, how how the fuck, like, basically saying that, like, yeah, your parents are fucking shit for, like, leaving you with her. Yeah. And there was no gray scene where they get in that fight at the fucking uh, the funeral. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The in-laws arc is totally gone. There is no. Yeah. You just, he's just looking at them funny. Well, yeah, they just stare at each other weird. But then, like, oh, I'm going to go to my parents' house where all this shit happens. She only goes to her parents' house one time in this version. Do you think it's one of those uh, cases where the writers were... Just assuming 
like, okay, everybody's seen the original, so they can fill in the gaps. That's exactly what it was. Uh, it kind of, uh, to a to a much lesser extent, the the first portion of this movie, like we said before, it does its own thing. It reminds me of Evil Dead Two, where they're just kind of counting on everybody who's watching Evil Dead Two to have seen Evil Dead One, and we're just going to kind of like run by uh, the first movie in the first five minutes. That's what it kind of felt like, and that's lazy writing in a case like this, where it's like, hey, we're counting on all you guys. You guys know the arc. You guys know about the parents. We don't even have to touch that. I mean, we're going to focus on the new stuff. I mean, but. Maybe when they do that, uh, what it ends up making for the people that haven't seen the original is a movie that's super fast paced and it's just brushing over everything. And you have the fucking it's just here and there. You have uh, the sister kind of, an you know, I don't know. I thought it would have been cool if they had those kids like in the masks, like everywhere, like just, you know, they like when they went in the woods, they'd see him like peeking out and shit. You're fucking obsessed with masks, man. No, I just thought it was cool. It reminded me of like the black eyed kids. I thought they were just going to be some dead fucking kids that, you know, walked the fucking ground. You know what it kind of gave me vibes of? It gave me vibes of the, the cover of Halloween three season, of the witch, the shadow, ki- you know? Yeah, that That's too. What, yeah. 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 Uh, see, when I saw the trailer, I was hoping they, they were going for something like that. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I got is uh, the morbid ending was the closest the movie ever gets to matching the tone of the original movie. And I kind of like the ending of this one. Yeah, but then it's fucked up. They they instantly make it lighthearted with that Ramones cover. See, uh, I thought it I thought it fit like uh, it's just like, oh, they edited it with the Ramones song because the original did. But you know what they should have done because they were diverting our attention. They should have fucking diverted our attention one last time. Because we thought, like, oh, well, of course they changed it to the girl. They're not going to kill a little kid. They should have edited it with a really bad taste, fucking over the top, just murder of Gage, and then it cuts to black, and it's over. Dude, that's, it's fucked up at the end, though. They break his neck, and that's it, and then it cuts to black? They just grab Gage. They, they pull G- Gage out of the car, and then just smash his face against the windshield, and it's no, over. No, they, sh- they should have just sat the car on fire, because they had the gas. <laughs> How the fuck are they going to bring him back now? He's going to still be burnt, dude. Oh, that's just bur- bury him burned. It was pretty effective. Because didn't they say... Uh, it's pretty fucked up at the end, yeah. Didn't didn't he signal him to unlock the car and then Gage unlocked it? Is that what happened? Mm-hmm. That's... that's no. Did he? I think so. I think they had the fucking car thing because you heard it go beep beep. Okay, maybe it's something like that. But regardless, it, it, was, it was effective enough. How are they going to... The sequel to this is definitely going to be different than... Uh, Eddie Furlong sequel. I mean, yeah. nah, dude, they're going to bring Eddie Furlong back. He's going to play the cop. That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, they, cause it they be said, dank. I'd watch you know, it. the, the, the makers of this said, if it makes enough money, we'll definitely do a sequel. Of course they will. Of course they're going to make one. See, uh, I think this movie would have been better if they just changed a couple things and made it fucking Pest cemetery three. I wish Gage would have like fucking started the car and left, but they can't, I think that would have been. They great. can't do that, man. They're not. They're not going to do a sequel off a movie that's thirty years old at this point. That no kids, you know, the the, the money. See, I, I remember whenever I wanted to be a director, I, that was my fucking mission. I was like, I'm going to resurrect all these uh, dead horror series. Uh, fucking uh, Pet Cemetery Tree, that's happening. Fucking uh, Bill and Ted Three, it's happening. It is happening though. See, Bill and Ted Three, that's a godsend. I mean, thank God that Alex winter and, and guys like that were actually, you know, pushing it along because that's the kind of movie they'd remake. If anything, mm-hmm. it, it, the fact that the gap has been so big, but the fact of the matter is, is their prime demo of these people that are going to see these shitty jump scare horror movies. Don't remember pet cemetery from 30 years ago. And they probably don't remember pet cemetery too, because was that thing fucking straight to video for God's sakes? Who knows? Right? No, it's just very underrated underrated and it was just kind of in and out but the thing is is the second one's my favorite I, lo- I I like them both but the second one's great uh, but yeah I mean th- I get it but it will be pretty rad the thing is is if they would have called it Pet Cemetery 3 and tweaked a couple of things and it was a hit I mean people would have been influenced to go back and find 1 and 2 mm-hmm. right I want to see a prequel you know, just make the E backwards so that it, it says Pet Cemetery 3, but three? people don't oh, really shit. know it stylized. So, oh, maybe it is a rebake. I don't have to see the old ones first. They should have did a, a a Thing prequel and just called it Pet Cemetery. But then by the time you watch the movie, it turns out, oh, my God, it's actually kind of a sequel uh, reboot. And then fucking just like Tiffany and Curse of Chucky, Edward Furlong shows up at the end <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a squad car. And it's like, whoa, yeah. no, they are acknowledging it. <laughs> <laughs> they could have done the same thing uh, fucking uh, uh, The Howling does. Part one and part three are based on the same book. Dude. That, they, that's shit, though. They should have given they should have given an Easter egg nod, and when they were going through the Pet cemetery, one of the gravestones should have said Zowie or something. 
right? Uh, I don't know. Zayo. Fucking Zayo, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like, uh, it's a law that we have to bring them up anytime he's on. <laughs> all right, so was there any other bullet points? That was all mine. Well, I have a, a thing. You know, usually when you're left in a car, you're always fucking with shit, right? Like, But I think it would have been cool if he would have like hit the reverse thing or neutral and backed out and got smashed by a semi. <laughs> Yeah, fucking, uh, it ends with a car chase. Like, they remake the car chase from the second movie. And, uh, fucking, he gets in the car and it's like, I wanna die just like Jesus Christ. And he starts fucking just chasing him down. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, he just gets hit by a semi, like, reverses into a semi. Yeah, fucking Gage gets hit, biggity bam, he goes head on collision with another semi. And it's like, oh, it went full circle. He got hit by the semi after all. No, no, I got it. I got it. What happens is. Like you guys said, Gage gets a hold of the car and he drives away and then it becomes baby's day out and the whole family's like trying to catch him <laughs> and he's crawling on like high beams on construction sites and they can't get him and shit. Jesus Christ. I've been dog. It's like home alone. But you know, what would be cool is if the ghost, cause since the ghost was attached to him, why couldn't the ghost save him? And like, it just shows the car moving and then it shows him and the baby just take off into the sunlight. The sun's coming up. Cause we don't want to see a fucking happy ending. This is past cemetery. And then he gets smashed by the semi. Exactly. I don't even know why they had to open the car. The thing is, is uh, alive and well and sane, non-evil Lewis Creed, he already sort of did the work for the zombie family because he left Gage in a car with the windows up. Yeah. Just giving him, give him 30 more minutes, that kid would have been dead anyway. Shut the fuck up. Why did I, that's, the whole, that's all I could think of when he locked him in there. It I, was decent. It was at nighttime. It was chill. <laughs> It wasn't night, was it? It was day. It, was, uh, it looked like it was getting ready to wind down and become night. Because I think at the very last scene, it was still like there was some sun out. No, it was dark. I don't fucking know. But regardless, I I, I think he, I get it. His adrenaline was running. He wasn't exactly thinking about that, but he should have cracked the window for the guy. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, fuck him. But I think he should have just fucking left. I think he just should have gotten the car with the fucking kid and took off. So just for fun and to wrap it up, Mac, let's all talk about things that did right versus uh, get, let's give it a couple of good points because it sounds like we all like the original better is that right mm -hmm. i don't like that ending i just don't i don't know it was it was good because it was different but i just didn't like it i hate how he left his wife there and just took off to look for fucking judd when did that happen at the end when he goes over there and finds out that judd's dead no he thinks who does he thinks over there i don't know he fucking takes off and runs across to the Judd's house, finds out that he's dead and his wife's getting stabbed by his daughter. Wasn't it weird? Uh, this is a testament to how fast the pacing was, but wasn't it weird how she, the, the wife was so on board with the Pet Cemetery gimmick? It seems like she knew about it the whole movie and I was kind of doing a double take. Like, did she? Because all this shit was happening so fast with her. Like, she sees her demon daughter. All of a sudden, she got stabbed by the spine and she's like, don't bury me in that cemetery. I'm like, you you really just believe this in about two seconds you learned all this happened. She has no fucking reason not to. She just saw her daughter. Yeah. I know, but like, you just, you, you'd think you'd be in a, have some kind of moment of disbelief. Like, this is not fucking happening. She, it, the way she acted it, it just seemed like she knew about it the whole fucking time. Like she was part of the, the bearing of the cat along with him at the beginning of the movie. I don't know. But like, I just hate how he left her and to go over and check on fucking Judd. Dude, fuck Judd. At this moment, fuck Judd. Why Judd is fucking better than his wife. I would have fucking checked on Judd too. Well, I mean, he left him there all passed out. He kind of fucked him over, you know? One thing I want to say that I, I couldn't stand was... um. And now I kind of get it. Once I got to the third the act, movie. I, well, so like I said, I, before we got to the, before we got to the last part where they changed it up, I was just on snooze city and I was criticizing the whole thing. And, and, uh, I fucking couldn't stand Ellie Creed in this either. Like before she was evil, she was the most annoying little bitch cunt I've ever seen in my life. Everything was too overly happy. Like I said, now I kind of get it. Cause they were trying to create a contrast with the way she was going to be in the last part of the movie. And at first I'm like, man, this, this, I get it. They're children actors, and I guess we're supposed to allow them a little bit of a pass, but they couldn't do better than this little chick? Yeah, you're a fucking, you're a monster. You just called a child a cut. Look, I'm just trying to uh, emphasize my rage here. I don't really mean that, but... She was old enough to understand. She seemed fine to me. She was fine. No, no, she was, uh, it was too hammy. It was too fucking over the top. Dude, girls are sassy as fuck. You gotta realize that. No, 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 no. She was not sassy. She was super happy-go-lucky, sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. It was- What's wrong with that? Just because you didn't grow up with that, man. It was a little too much. But, like I said, I get it. 
it wasn't her acting ability. It was the director saying, hey, we got to create a contrast. Because when she showed up as a zombie, she acted well. I'm like, oh, okay, she is better than that. That was They were just fucking, that was the direction she was given. Uh, but give us your rating in, the, in something you liked about the movie, Mac. Um, I don't know. I liked, it's okay. I liked the fucking kids in the masks. I liked uh, the cat, obviously. He was cute. Um, I liked Judd and I liked the dad, but that was about it. So what do you rate it out of 10? Uh, six. That's fair. What about you, Zach? I'd give it a five or six. Uh, cause I, it's my favorite story of Stephen King and, uh, I would, I would fuck, uh, Rachel. That's, yeah, that was good in this movie. <laughs> well, see, I I, I kind of want to watch it again. I've only seen it once, so I want to give it another yeah. shot because some of the stuff you guys talked about, I fucking am like, what? Well, I appreciate. So I I was gonna say that too. So I appreciate, like I said, them fixing that weird fucking thing about Judd not being clear and his motives not being clear. I appreciate that little scene that put all that perfectly. That was good, and I didn't catch all the Wendigo shit, but it sounds like that was cool. I appreciate that. Um, I would have left the window go out of it. See, I think uh, Stephen King's got this thing where uh, he always like towards the end of his book, he's like, "Oh yeah, it's all happening because of uh, a demon." It's like that, that, that's not scary, Stephen. Stephen, come on, Stephen. Uh, don't just throw come something on, paranormal in there. See, that, that's how you know he's doing a good job at fucking uh, suspending disbelief. It's like, come on, don't don't throw something paranormal in the book all of a sudden, Stephen, when you've, you're you reading a book about how people are getting fucking buried and coming back to life. It's like, oh, you've already done a good job at doing this. Don't add something else to throw it off balance. Well, in the original movie, it was just sort of implied that the Indian tribe was kind of evil. And that made sense. It's like an Indian tribe worshiping weird gods and being you know, sacrificial. That was good enough. But then they, they go the distance and say the Indians fucking pack their bags and skip town because it was evil and shit and the Wendigo and all that bullshit. Um, yeah, it was, a little, it was one step unneeded. So I'm confused. I, I kind of want to talk about something. Um, so like well, if- he hasn't given his fucking thought about the movie yet. It's rating. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, I'll, I'll finish it. Basically, I agree with you guys. I, I wanted to give it a five, but I'll say five or six, but it's weird because... I walked out saying six, but I wasn't sure if I if I just... Because uh, I was kind of bored uh, towards the end because, yeah, it was like, oh, I, this is the movie I've seen, but not as good. But then that, the ending, I liked it enough to like, oh, did I just... Did the ending make me think I liked it more and gave me uh, another star because of that? But I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I give it props for doing something different. So, yeah, five or six. But the reason I, I'm undecided is I pretty much gave it a five. I called it middle of the road. The difference is this is kind of middle of the road, too. But the difference is, like Mac, I kind of want to watch this again. Whereas it, which I gave a five, I didn't care to watch it again. See, I didn't watch it again. I only watched it once. We watched it because we did fucking commentaries for it. But yeah. I, I really had no desire to watch. I got everything out of that movie the first time. I thought it was good. I liked how they threw like that fucking that painting scene was fucked up. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. We 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 talked about how it could have been done better when we uh, when we did our review of it. Well, uh, next time we'll get a camera and we'll go out and shoot it and we'll do it better. Yeah, I Let's would. I would have. We'll go. We'll, Let's have we'll Lucas go out and shoot it. up. But <laughs> what did Lucas think of this movie? Uh, I don't really know. We didn't really talk about it. Really. Oh, I mean. <laughs> That's a bad sign. He he thought it was fast paced too. He was like, "Yeah, it's kind of, eh." Well, it it was like it, it, they they had to sit there and expedite the movie that everybody knows and get all that in there before they got to their. Uh, no, they did have to do that because uh, they could have just made a sequel if they really wanted to do that. Fuck them. Well, no. I'm saying that's that's I think that was their thought process, but he was kind of like, "Yeah, how did she?" He said the same thing you guys did. How did she get him over the the, the pile if the dad had a hard time getting up there? She flew. That sort of thing I suspend disbelief for. I don't really give a fuck about that. For all I know, the yeah. Wendigo fucking helped her, right? He threw her over. <laughs> yeah, so for all I know. But I will say also, uh, I did like the scene where he's in the bathtub with her and he's combing her hair oh, and the that, stitches. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty effective scene. That was the same with the cat, too, like when they're combing him. I thought he was going to comb it and like her scalp was going to come off. Yeah. What I liked, though, so with that scene and the scene that followed it where she asked him to lay in bed with her, the whole time he's got this look on his face like he knows he fucked up, like immediately, right? Yeah. 
And I, I like that. That's the best job that he did in the whole movie of not having to really say any words and he's getting a point across. I, I enjoyed that whole initial interaction. That was pretty cool. See, um, but yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, so is it like, oh, hey, this is my daughter. I like her. So they're going to be good to you. And then after you're like, fuck her, then they're going to be bad. I'm kind of confused on that. Is that how it works? No, it is never. His, it was never his daughter. That came well, I back. know, but she was decent to him the whole time. And then like the mom came in and she was going to be decent to her. And she's like, this isn't my fucking daughter to, f- to lure him into a false sense of security. Don't, that's what fucking Gage did, too, man. You really think he wanted to play with Judd and now he wants to play with you. He didn't really want to play Shut with Shut the him. fuck up. You always do those fucking voices. <laughs> I want to play with like, you. No, no, do it, no, do he goes, he's like, he's like, first I play with mommy, yeah, play with Judd. Now I want to play with you. It reminds me of like Street Fighter where it's like, K-E. 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 <laughs> I want to play with you. No. You. No, I like, uh, I like when he's like, we had an awful good time. <laughs> it's on the fucking phone. <laughs> <laughs> dude he's creepy as fuck though he's perfect yeah dude they did so great and i love uh <laughs> I love in the original when lewis sets uh gauge on fire it's clearly the dummy again mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not even convinced i love it though i love all that hamminess but yeah uh did did the director of one and two ever make another horror movie because she she did a good job of making like a really fucking depressing looking and feeling movie Two times. and But she did a good job on also making them very, uh, they stood apart. They could have stood on their own feet. Like Pet Cemetery 2 yeah. was very much its own thing. It wasn't sequelitis. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was. It and was its own was deal. that was the same director? Mary Lambert? Yeah. Yeah. yeah same director. Uh, well, the only the only thing it did that was like uh, typical sequel protocol was, you know, sequels always have to be bigger. And this one, he had more people coming back, right? That mm-hmm. was kind of a sequel. But anyway... Five or six, but I do kind of want to see it again. But I have a feeling I'll watch it once more, and that'll probably be it. I don't see, I don't see me growing like a huge fondness for it. Uh, but they'll probably make a sequel. Mm-hmm. Did it do really well? It did. It did well. It, I think it opened up against something ridiculous, like uh, it couldn't compete with fucking Captain Marvel or something. But it did really well, right? It it, it, it didn't do it numbers, mm-hmm. but I mean, it doesn't compare to fucking action superhero movie though but i'm saying it didn't do it numbers but it did on the budget that it was it did a lot of money for him i don't think they expected it to do it numbers what about us what do you compare it to that do you think it's i I don't know i think they're about the same yeah us that 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 could be a cinema enema all on its own but zach hasn't seen it that one was fucked up i there's so many can like fucking fuck that movie confused about on that if zach finally watches that we'll do one of that because Fuck that movie, man. Hey, uh, she did a she did a Urban Legends movie, Bloody Mary. Ew, <laughs> she Gross, did that. I, I, that was straight to straight to video. Yeah, two thousand five. She directed it. She lost her touch. Hey, uh, what we should do is before we wrap up, we should do we should read some comments on our happiness. So we 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 have a couple here that I'll I'll read uh, mutineer he's been reading and watching a lot of our comment oh, sorry videos and leaving a lot of feedback he cuz we asked people to let us know what you guys are thinking of these cuz Zach and I would definitely try and go to bat and do more of them if you guys are enjoying them so uh until then we're just going to do them when we can at least once a month but mutineer says he's enjoying them he says to keep it up and he he he's liking them a lot also the mendoza of course he says uh, he's loving them. He says that we're killing it with them. And uh, Zach, he said, you're killing it with the editing. Uh, Mendoza has a really long comment, actually. So I, I guess I should do him the justice of reading that. And we'll uh, we'll call that that. He says, regarding happiness, happiness is an interesting film. I prefer Welcome to the Dollhouse and storytelling when it comes to rewatchability. I was in high school when happiness came out, and I remember renting this movie. And I could not wait to see what madness Todd Salons dreamt up. And I was not disappointed. I've only seen happiness once and it leaves a lasting impression. Thanks to Todd on his unflinching storytelling laced with dark humor. I guess happiness deals with despair, trying to find happiness in the midst of despair. Happiness is one guy. (laughs) Happiness for one guy is fucking boys. While for another, it's cold calling people while jerking off salons as always subverts the typical portrait of the suburban nuclear family to create an unsettling film. And I love that this conversation makes me want to watch happiness again. And he goes on to talk about us because we, we referenced that he 
says, Jordan Peele's Us is just okay. Once you start analyzing the film, uh, that is when the film starts to unravel. Us is just a two-hour episode of The Twilight Zone. Aaron, how could you watch Suspiria 2018 without subtitles? Please rewatch it again. I do want to. I mean, I don't, I, that was fucked. Uh, he says, I saw it in the theater and I dug the movie. Great visuals and soundtrack, though I walked away a bit confused with the third act. Uh, I loved Doubt, he says. That's a great movie. And he says, Filth is pretty good movie, too. He says, I need to check out Blue Ruin, Nocturnal Animals, Kill List, and Dragged Across Concrete. Though, he says, seeing Mel Gibson in a film grosses me out. Okay, he's not for everybody, but I love Mel, man. I forgive him. Why can't you forgive him? But For what, making a Jesus movie? <laughs> no, saying he hates the Jews. He committed the ultimate crime. He made a fucking Jesus movie. <laughs> No. And then he said he hated the Jews. He hated the Jews. And, uh, well, he's also been pretty crass over the years, even before he was uh, on the public eye of, of it. Because I've I watched interviews with him where he said he said things about, like, homosexuals and stuff, where he's just kind of being a um, uh, macho fucking type of guy, just saying shit that people in the 80s and early 90s said. You know what that means? He's probably a closet case. He's ashamed of his own love of the cock. <laughs> you know what that means? Uh, Adrian Mendoza, he also says, I listen, he, he's giving us feedback because we asked for this. He says, I listen to the YouTube videos you guys post on my Chromebook. And when I'm out and about, that's when I listen to you guys on Google Play. So he's one of the guys that listens to both because we were curious on how many people listen to both. If any of them are out there, who's, you know, which, which format he says, you guys are killing it with cinema enema. Zach, as usual, is doing an awesome job with the editing and putting these episodes together. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Omega. Appreciate it. Hell yeah. But anyway, thank you guys for the feedback. Uh, anybody else out there, please let us know. Leave us feedback on these because they're a lot of fun to do. It's fun to bullshit and we can actually talk about the movies a little bit more. And, and I've, I've said it every episode and, and I think Zach agrees, but I've actually gotten to where I like watching movies again because there's something about having to do commentaries nonstop that it sucks the fun out of watching films. And this gives me a reason to sort of do my homework and enjoy and absorb a, a movie. So it's really it's really neat. But anyway, we'll we'll let you guys know what we're doing next so we can get your feedback and questions and any input uh, on the next film that we're doing. But until then, the the same old, same old. If you guys are watching on YouTube, click the notification bell. Share us with everybody you know. Give us some love. Help us grow. And be on the lookout, of course, for uh, it. Like you said, if you're like Adrian Mendoza and he's got the right idea, he can listen to YouTube and shit when he's at home. That makes total sense. You know, you don't have to be flicking an app off and on. You're on your Chromebook, your PC. But when he's out and about... That's when he goes to Stitcher or Google Play or Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It makes total sense. So just know that we're on all those places and it's super uh, convenient and they're usually up earlier anyway. And uh, you can find the links for all those places on the description of every one of these videos. Plus, after Adrian Mendoza fucking fucks the shit out of my ass, I have to go to a Stitcher too to get it all sealed up. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Uh, and if you guys really appreciate what we do here... Make sure, even if you guys are just listening on YouTube, do us a solid, click one of those links. If you have an iPhone, then click the Apple link or vi or whatever you're associated with. Cinema Enema is now on fucking iTunes. You could, uh, even if you've already reviewed our other episodes or uh, fucking uh, the Revival House Network, you could go to Cinema Enema and give us uh, its own uh, review on its own feedback, well. And if you've already left us uh, ratings on other existing shows, you could still go over there and leave comments if you want. But that stuff helps us out a lot. Which is what I just said, but different. Well, yeah, but different. You're saying that the actual Cinema Anima has its own isolated, separate channel because before we, we couldn't because iTunes is fucking stupid. Yeah, iTunes was uh, being really stingy. But regardless, it helps us out a lot. Yeah, because they're like, yeah, well, you guys got 20 podcasts. We're not going to let you do it. Yeah, that's what happens whenever you just like to create, Mac. You just uh, put out so much uh, fucking great <laughs> shit. You wouldn't know, though. Bitch. Well, as long as we want to keep them different so it's fun like this, absolutely. But uh, with as far as the leaving the ratings and shit like that, and, and even on YouTube, when you like the videos here or on the podcast uh, formats, it helps people that are into this kind of stuff discover our stuff. And you guys want the family to expand, right? I know you do. And uh, that's all we got. Everybody, uh, Max from the Big Mac, Zach's been Zach, I've been Aaron, bye bye puppets, adios. You don't say that on a new podcast, you can't do that. I do it, I just did it. No, you just can't do that. I've been doing it. <laughs>